Hi everyone and welcome to today's Biology Daily Booster. We are now at number 18 in the series. Do note this is an advanced listed topic in terms of both foundation and higher tier biology. What we're going to be looking at today then is contraception and IVF. So what we actually find then is when we're talking about contraception, this is basically a technique that we use to try to avoid pregnancy. And this falls into two categories. You can either have hormonal contraceptives, which are using hormones to disrupt those cycles, or the non-hormonal methods, which are basically barriers that prevent the sperm from reaching the egg. So here's some examples for you that you should learn. Non-hormonal contraceptives, these are our barrier methods, remember, condoms, diaphragms, and the IUD. Whereas the hormonal contraceptives, we've got our two types of pill, combined and progesterone, and the IUS. Go careful not to mix up IUD and IUS, because obviously one is hormonal, the other non-hormonal. One of the things to watch out for if they give you a question about contraceptives is the way they phrase it. Now, if the heading of your table column is effectiveness, that tells you how good that particular contraceptive technique is at stopping you getting pregnant. So if the effectiveness as a percentage as the table on the right shows is 98%, then that means for every 100 people using the male condom as their technique, then only two would end up with a pregnancy as a result. The other 98, no pregnancy. So if it says effectiveness, then that means the higher the number, the better. So just watch out for that little term because sometimes people mix it up and then they start saying that the lower numbers are the better ones. So effectiveness, the higher the number, the better it is. The next part we need to look at then is now we've had a look at how to prevent pregnancy, is how to help people get pregnant when they may have certain issues with doing so naturally. So this is where we're going to have a look at fertility treatments. And a lot of these do have a basis in just using hormone treatments in order to help out. There's a range of different reasons that someone may be infertile. So it might be down to issues for the man in terms of having blocked sperm ducts or not enough sperm being produced. It also might be that the sperm just aren't motile enough. So even when they're produced, they just don't swim well enough to get to the egg. Could be female related, so there's a lack of mature eggs being produced in the ovaries. It might be that the ovaries are not releasing an egg when they should. And all of these have the same end result, that it's going to be very hard to get pregnant through natural means. So what we do is, as I say, tend to go for hormone treatments where possible, first of all. We don't jump straight to the highest intervention level generally. Usually there'll be a range of different processes. But the first step is normally a hormone treatment. So you can see FSH, which we've already heard about in the menstrual cycle, can be used as a fertility drug. As we already said, FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, it's going to stimulate eggs to mature in the ovaries. We then also see estrogen being triggered because we've got higher FSH levels. So that correlates to producing more estrogen in the body. And that means we get an increased chance of pregnancy. However, because we're stimulating eggs to mature in the ovaries through artificially introducing FSH, there is a greater risk that there would be more than one egg being matured at the same time. So this is where through fertility treatments, the risk of multiple births does increase. So something to keep in mind, that is a potential issue, if you like. Or you could view it as a bonus that when you've paid for the treatment, if you go private, it's buy one, get one free. Now, if obviously hormone treatments alone don't work, then what you need to do is go through a process called IVF, which stands for in vitro fertilization. When we look at IVF as a process, the first thing still has hormones. So we're going to be using FSH and LH to the mother. And the whole reason behind using those two hormones, number one, is to make sure as many eggs are maturing as possible. So FSH is going to cause large numbers of eggs to mature. And then LH is going to cause the release at the right time, because remember, LH triggers the ovulation. 
So what we do, we're going to be using FSH initially to cause lots of eggs to mature at the same time. And then once they've decided that the eggs are at the right time, they will then administer the dose of LH, which causes ovulation to take place. Now, that means they're going to be collecting all of those eggs which are mature at that same point because they've all been allowed to mature at the same time. So you collect a whole range of eggs. Obviously, depending on the individual determines how many you get. Some people may not get many, others could get loads. Once those eggs have been collected, they're placed in a petri dish in a special solution that supports them. And then the sperm are actually added as well. So sperm may come from obviously the father, if he's obviously done the donation himself. If however, it's an issue with the men, that means that the sperm isn't good enough to get there. You can also use a sperm donor for this. But the sperm is added to the petri dish with those eggs and they will fertilize. Same kind of process as happens naturally inside the female, just in a petri dish. Once that's happened, they then literally watch these eggs in the lab over a few days. So they will have a look at them under the microscope, working out which ones have been fertilized and which of those embryos are developing properly. So they will literally be counting how many cells they've got and they'll be grading them on a scale of you know, A to E. What they then do is a few days later, they're going to then select one or two of those little embryos. Now, the ones they're going to select are going to be the highest graded, so the ones with the best chance of taking. Reason it's one or two, usually it'll be one for people who are much younger. If you are older, then they tend to do two because there's less chance of it actually taking. So place those into the uterus of the mother, and then in theory, the rest of the pregnancy just continues as normal. Hopefully, either one or both of those eggs will adhere to the edge of the uterus. They will then grow, develop, and then you give birth to your healthy baby at the end. We do need to consider some of the issues that surround IVF then. First of all, there could be some people who may not want to use it or may be against it, down to the fact it's not a natural process and obviously certain religious beliefs may actually prohibit this kind of intervention. Positive though is that those people who would not be able to have a baby through natural means can actually conceive and have their own child. And it also gives the opportunity for older parents to have children as well. In some cases, you may have medical treatments that mean you could affect your fertility. And if obviously you're going to need this treatment when you're very young and not at a point where you want to have a baby, then we can obviously look at the potential for freezing eggs before that treatment takes place. And then they can just be used for IVF at that later stage when you've actually got into the relationship and you're thinking I'm at a time in my life where I want the baby, then you've got your eggs frozen. Downside potentially might be good, depends on your viewpoint I suppose, is that many IVF treatments do result in these multiple births. So twins are super common through IVF because they are implanting two eggs at that point. Obviously, nice in the case of you get two children at the same time, particularly if you are paying for this privately because it's a very expensive process to go through. So two for one deal. Downside, you then have to pay for two children and raise two children at the same time. And babies, if one cries, the other cries, etc. you need to be able to cope with that. Now, the thing to bear in mind is, yes, this is an expensive process and it doesn't come with a guarantee of pregnancy at the end. You could pay for this, go through all of the kind of emotional trauma and everything of it and not get a baby at the end of it. So there are some issues here that we do need to keep in mind. Final thing to do today then is head on over to have a go at the quiz to see how well you've understood the content from today's little booster. Do remember that if there are bits that you're not 100% certain on, then you can watch the main video on the channel just to obviously boost that knowledge or use your revision guides and other notes in order to help you understand that in a bit more detail. Don't forget to join us again tomorrow for our next daily booster.